Spartan Football Weekly, presented by Una Mas. Tonight on the show, we'll preview the Nevada game. We'll also revisit the highlights from San Diego State, the 34-30 home loss that San Jose State took last weekend. And we'll hear the heartwarming story about senior defensive tackle Anthony Larcival and his return to football activities. First, let's recap the San Diego State game with some highlights. All right, let's go to the highlights. San Jose State taking on San Diego State first quarter and a, uh, it would be a theme of the game of blocked field goal from 35 yards away. McMorrow just had a rough game. Next possession for the Aztecs was an interception by Benet Ben Wakery. How about that grab just hauling it away from the wide receiver and the Spartans get the ball back. Austin Lopez responds with a 43 yard field goal and he needed to use every bit of his leg to get all 43 off the crossbar and the Spartans had a three to nothing lead. Team recovered a fumble on the next Aztec possession. It was Sean Bacon getting the fumble recovery and San Jose State gets the ball back and then David fails on a crossing route to Tim Crawley from 13 yards away. It was the first touchdown of the year for Tim Crawley and it made it 10 to nothing San Jose State. After a touchdown from the Aztecs, McMorrow extra point blocked by San Jose State special teams. And again, that theme continues for him. How about this play? The flea flicker to Crawley, back to, to David Fales, and then all the way down to wide open Chandler Jones for a 40-yard touchdown, 20-6. to In the second half, Austin Lopez from 46 yards away, and again off of the crossbar and just enough to get it over for Austin Lopez. The Spartans led by three starting the fourth quarter and added another touchdown to Tim Crawley from 12 yards away to make it 30 to 20, but then 14 unanswered points from San Diego State and they got the victory 34 to 30. Billy Freeman had one catch in the game before he left with an injury and it was for 32 yards right there you see. And how about Chandler Jones's night? Here's another big reception from the wide receiver in addition to that touchdown, but he had 11 receptions, 155 yards and a score, but the Spartans do lose. Final score of 34 to 30. So uh, congratulations to those guys. You know, they just didn't quit and they, they didn't give up. Um, so uh, I think that, uh, you know, we, we by no means um, are where I want us to be. And I think I've, I've alluded to that the last four Mondays. We've, we've pulled up the win, but we still um, are not where I want to be as a team. We need to continue to grow and develop and improve uh, across the board. And, you know, tonight I think offensively, uh, you know, our, our yards, um, you know, at below average. And, uh, and they were right about where we were, but they just made plays and, and we didn't. So um, that's kind of a summary of, of, I think, of what happened. Um, I think that defensively they did a good job mixing things up, coverages and putting pressure on our quarterback, David Fales. Um, they are effective stopping the run game um, with their unique defense and uh, uh, flipping things around. I thought defensively we started off pretty fast and played some good ball in the first quarter, um, but they sustained some long drives and, and were able to, to capitalize on it. So. Um, special teams, uh, you know, I thought we played okay early on. The, the, the blocked field goal, I have to see it on film. I think it was a low trajectory. The kick was low. I don't think anyone came up the middle and, and got a hand on it, but I'll have to see that. And, uh, and, then, and then they did a good job. You know, everyone's yelling away, away, but really uh, you're, they were yelling away, away their team because usually that doesn't happen. And we, we coach our guys to, to fan the field. You have to cover that. And their athletic safety got the ball and made a real nice return. And that was a, a, a big sway in the game, I think. And, and then they, I think they punched it in on a reverse, we, um, a reverse play and give them credit and, and uh, for, for keep comp competing. We'll take our first break here on Spartan Football Weekly. When we come back, you hear the heartwarming story about senior defensive tackle Anthony Larcival and his return to football. More on the program when we come back. The Learfield Sports Directors Cup is the officially sanctioned annual award recognizing all around excellence in men's and women's collegiate competition. NACTA and USA Today co-founded this esteemed honor in 1993, still widely recognized as the crowning achievement in college athletics. Uruma! Uruma's. Let's go, Uruma's! 
Una Mas. Una Mas. We taste better for lunch or dinner. Sergio Romo, pitcher and two-time World Series champion. A Bay Area legend. E-40, platinum recording artist and actor. A Bay Area legend. Kinder's Barbecue, three generations of hard work and family pride. Award-winning barbecue, sauces, and meats. Kinder's Barbecue, a Bay Area legend. I like the big plays. I'll tell you what, really impressed with our defense, uh, how they stepped up. You talk about the saying, bend, but don't break. I think that was the epitome of bend but don't break tonight because uh, they did nickel and dime us and, and, and throw outs and quick passes here and there and, and, and drove down. But once they hit inside our five yard line, we uh, just built a wall. But our defense did an outstanding job standing up. And that just says a lot. I think it's a lot of, about uh, a Spartan spirit and about a, a fighting spirit, never quit, never give up. And, and that's what I want to have as a trademark, a characteristic of our program. We're always competing. As long as you're doing those things, you're in every game. Yes. Um, Andrew Larson came back from what was some people may have thought was, mm -hmm. he would never have been able to do. In your opinion, how was it to have him back? And what does it kind of mean maybe to the Spartan team to have him back? Well, oh, I, I tell you, that's just a great, uh, inspiring story. Anthony Larsonville. Uh, a guy who six months ago, eight months ago, we didn't know if he'd ever play football, if he'd even be able to return to school, and very concerned about his long-term health. It is an inspiring story, a young man who, who just wouldn't give up on his comeback, and he is inspirational to this football team. For our young guys to see that, I think that sends a good message to the young guys. Never, never take anything for granted and, and always have an attitude of gratitude. Imagine someone told you you could not do the one thing you loved the most. Not because you didn't want to, but because your health would not allow you to. Would you shut down, or would you keep pushing against all odds? The San Jose State Spartans made a name for themselves in the 2012 football season, receiving national recognition for the first time in program history. The only way to cap off this 10-2 season would be to shut down Bowling Green and the Military Bowl in our nation's capital. As the rest of the Spartans prepared for battle, Anthony Larsoul had a battle he had to face on his own. It was December 14th and two in the morning I had woken up and I had vomit, and diarrhea, and, and I, I thought, you know, I just maybe had a simple flu and I was sick. So I, I shot our trainer a message, a text message, and I told him, hey, there's no way I'm gonna be able to practice today. I had, last thing I remember, laying in bed, shooting him a text message again saying, should I go to Kaiser or should I go to the Student Health Center? And then I guess I'd fallen asleep. That's all, that's the last thing I had remembered. What Anthony thought would have been a nap turned into two weeks of his life he would never remember. I don't know anything was going on since laying in bed, but I was told I was rushed to the ER and then from there to the ICU, and and I was told I was in critical condition, and then I was sedated, I was heavily sedated, and, and I was sedated for a few days, I believe. Anthony was diagnosed with viral meningoencephalitis, an illness that infects and causes swelling in the brain. Despite missing the opportunity to go to battle with his teammates, Anthony had a lot more on his mind. Now that I'm starting to understand I'm in the hospital, I ask my doctors, what's wrong with me? When can I play football again? Well, right now, we want to keep you out of school and we want to keep you out of football for quite a while. But certainly, we want to keep you out of contact sports for 12 months. I'm thinking, oh my gosh, I might never ever play again. I'm a senior, we got a new coach. He might just want to get rid of me. <laughs> Coach Carragher gave Anthony the words of encouragement he needed. He told me three key things that I remembered, and it was first, 
get healthy. Then we'll talk school, and then we'll talk football. Basic skills such as walking, talking, and even brushing his teeth started coming back. But playing football was on another playing field. Couldn't understand why my body couldn't move like it used to. I couldn't understand why film is so difficult to watch. Why, what, you know, why do I have to relearn a whole new defense? But I was, I was, I was depressed. It took for Neil Perry, who is our graduate assistant coach, who has come through some adverse situations. It, told, it took for him to tell me, NGU, never give up. And that sunk in because when he had told me that, it, it meant the world to me because, you know, I was in a tough situation as well. And that's all I kept in the back of my mind was never give up. So anybody that is dealing with something that's troubling, you know, just I would want to tell them to never give up. We had an emotional talk yesterday, and I already told all y'all, but I'm just proud of you. Shout, shout out to Anthony Larson. We wish, we wish you could be here right now, but you know, we got this one for Anthony and seniors. And oh, uh, it's for Larson, Anthony Larson. He couldn't make it today. He's in the hospital right now. We're playing for him as a D line. Through social media, I was able to see all my Spartan family that cared for me. I was able to see my teammates that cared for me, pictures and, and, and distant family that I hadn't seen in some time. And it, it was encouraging because that's what got me through the depression because knowing and seeing how many people cared for me meant the world to me. Anthony Larcival steps onto the field in 2013 as a senior with the Spartans. I tell you what, every uh, outstanding season I believe there's stories. There's, there's, there's strong stories, outstanding stories of, of people overcoming things and, and things that happen. And, and yes, that could be a, cor a, a key story about the success of this program. Moments of adversity will always strike in an athlete's life. But with the potential of never returning to play football again, Anthony shined through in moments of doubt. He went against all odds, displayed courage, strength, and when adversity struck, he never gave up. Personally, I'm looking forward to just being able to say I can play again. I'm just excited to see our success together. We taste better for lunch or dinner. It takes intense preparation, finesse, and precision to be crowned as the king in a unanimous decision. It bobs and it weaves around every corner. With its hit list of features, this car is a performer. So roll on to victory with the path of least resistance. The new 2014 Scion TC is made to go the distance. Did you know that Sarah Winchester had a crew of carpenters building 24 hours a day for 38 years? It's true. Her mansion grew to 160 rooms during continuous construction from 1884 to 1922. And she didn't have to worry about building permits. Come and see their beautiful but bizarre handiwork. Guided tours daily at the world famous Winchester Mystery House San Jose. Minutes away, ages apart.
Welcome back to Spartan Football Weekly. Now joined by San Jose State head coach Ron Carragher and coach. Uh, very frustrating loss uh, last week against San Diego State. There were some chances in that game that I think the Spartans had to, to get back into it. What did you tell them after the game? Yeah, definitely. It was challenging. It was a tough one. Uh, I, I thought we played hard uh, after, during the game, and, and we just didn't capitalize at key opportune times when we needed to the most, and, and that's tough. And uh, you know, the best way to, to respond to that is just roll up our sleeves, let's learn from it, and let's go back and see what we can do. And everyone looks in the mirror and just say, hey, what could I have done mm -hmm. to, to have made a difference as coaches, as players? And I think uh, lesson learned, and then we got to move beyond it. Uh, our players uh, have a good attitude. They know there's a lot of football left to play, and, and uh, it'd be so important to, to play postseason and to finish the season mm -hmm. on a high note. When you say learn from it, what do, what do you try to tell the players to learn from something like that? Because I think there was defensive lapses and special teams. Sure, uh, it, it's across the board. Sometimes a player to stand out that mm -hmm. was the difference, but I, I believe a football game really never comes down to one play. When you play close to 200 snaps uh, of football in mm -hmm. a game, all those have an influence on the outcome of the game. So um, I think looking back, maybe it was a, a missed tackle here or, or, or yeah. maybe uh, a lack of execution here because whatever reason. And, and we go back, we as coaches, we grade it. Mm -hmm. um, how can we improve? How could we have played a better game? And, and it's the competitor in all of us. We always want to get better and always want to improve. I don't know if I've ever seen so many blocked field goals and point <laughs> afters in a game, but uh, that was really the turning point when Austin's kick got blocked and then they returned it for a big yardage after that. Was that the turning point for you too? Most definitely. I think that changed a lot of momentum when we were about to go up 18 mm -hmm. and instead two plays later they score and it seems like I think we went we're up three or four mm -hmm. so it, it it really um, it brought it close and and that's tough that was a challenge mm -hmm. but um, hey you just you got that's why 60 minutes and you yeah. got to play for four quarters and and sometimes those sways of momentums happen you just have to be able to put your foot down, stop it, and reverse it. One thing, too, is they, they figured out how to bottle up Jared Lawson. I mean, he, he wasn't able to do too much in that game. Was that because mm -hmm. of the 3-3-5 three, three, that we were talking about and just that uniqueness of a the defense? A lot of movement up front, and it creates trouble for the offense to get on the same page blocking. And, and it's a little bit of a roll the dice defense mm -hmm. because with that, they have an extra guy down a lot, and they play a lot of man-to-man -man coverage. And you just got to be able to catch them in it and make them pay to where they don't do that. Uh, and we did sometimes, but not mm -hmm. enough at the end of the day. Well, I think there were some positives, too, from that game. But boy, Tim Crawley, mm -hmm. you know, three receptions, two of them for touchdowns. And from what we've seen this year, really, he's a dual threat kind of guy, but we haven't seen him with receptions like that this season. Timmy really is, uh, has been a receiver here for two yeah. years, and, and when we did lose Tyler Irvin, uh, our tailback, game one, mm -hmm. we thought Timmy could be that guy that stretches the defense from the backfield, and he made a nice adjustment. It was his position he played in high school, running back, mm -hmm. but I think at the end of the day, his position that we, we like him at the most is playing receiver or slot receiver. Mm -hmm. and then Chandler Jones again, uh, over 100 yeah. yards. Seems like it's run-of-the-mill well, numbers for him, but still impressive. He's so solid, a senior. He knows what he's doing. Uh, but the best thing, Chandler, the numbers are impressive, the mm -hmm. touchdowns mm -hmm. are impressive. Great attitude. Terrific young man that is a solid rock for our football team. Well, at, at one play, I remember Kyle Nunn going down for a little bit. He was on the field for a while there. Chandler came mm -hmm. back and looked like he talked to, to Kyle about what he saw, what maybe something that, that he pointed out to him. Do you, do you know what they talked about? I don't, but I know this. Whatever it was, it was words of wisdom because <laughs> Chandler, Chandler has, is a smart, savvy football player. He understands defenses, he sees good things, and he just goes with the flow. He's a guy, he's not a, uh, he just has a good feel for the game, put it to simplify the words. And, 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 he, and the quarterback's able to find him because he has a good knack for finding that open void in the zone mm -hmm. defense. Mm -hmm. Or man coverage, he has that quickness to be able to separate. So he's such, such a solid and steady player, it's great having him on our team. And what'd you think of David Fales? I know his, his numbers were pretty good, but there were times where he was a little inaccurate and he, he took some chances downfield. Sure, I think uh, David played a solid game. There's, uh, I think across the board, uh, we look at it, there's uh, room for improvement mm -hmm. in all, all mm -hmm. phases of the offense. But uh, yeah, definitely, uh, you know, sometimes there are those changes in fronts and coverages and people are mixing things yeah. up and getting pressure and, and maybe it throws a little bit of the timing off in our passing mm -hmm. game. But yeah, definitely, that's an area that we, we, uh, we, we need to improve and we could have done a little bit better on Saturday. And finally, Coach, before we take a quick break, uh, Billy Freeman took mm -hmm. quite a blow in that game. It was a little crossing pattern over the middle and defensive player read it kind of beautifully and lowered into him uh, pretty hard. Yeah, unfortunate uh, that Billy 
got uh, knocked down and, yeah. and uh, suffered a, a, a concussion mm -hmm. during the game, and, 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 and we've had too many of those. You know, yeah. this year yeah. it's been, seems like we've had a few, but uh, Billy will be back. It's day to day. We mm -hmm. just have to hit a certain point where we clear X number of hours beyond the symptoms, and, and so it's day to day, but uh, we look forward and welcome his return. And a kind of follow-up question to that, you know, when you have Billy Freeman going out, he's been mm -hmm. the tight end for you guys, mm -hmm. uh, but I think uh, Jordan Teal came in, did a nice job, and, and right. Lorius I saw in a Correct. few formations. So yeah, Jordan became the, the number one guy, and mm -hmm. Travis Lorius came in as our second tight end mm -hmm. when we had two tight end formations, and, and they both played solid. It was good to see Jordan. He's really improved from this spring. Uh, Coach Malley's done a nice job of, of, of improving his game as a receiver, as a route runner, and as a blocker. Mm -hmm. All right, we'll take a quick break with Coach Carriger. More on the show when we come back. It takes intense preparation, finesse, and precision to be crowned as the king in a unanimous decision. It bobs and it weaves around every corner. With its hit list of features, this car is a performer. So roll on to victory with the path of least resistance. The new 2014 Scion TC is made to go the distance. Did you know that Sarah Winchester had a crew of carpenters building 24 hours a day for 38 years? It's true. Her mansion grew to 160 rooms during continuous construction from 1884 to 1922. And she didn't have to worry about building permits. Come and see their beautiful but bizarre handiwork. Guided tours daily at the world famous Winchester Mystery House San Jose. Minutes away, ages apart. Come on, baby. Una mas. Una mas. Una mas. Una mas. We taste better for lunch or dinner. Welcome back to Spartan Football Weekly. Continuing to talk with San Jose State head coach Ron Carriger, now previewing the Nevada game. And this is a team that has struggled a, a lot lately. Uh, played some good opponents too, but. What are you seeing as, as kind of the vulnerability from the Wolfpack? Well, I think uh, they've played three top 25 team, mm -hmm. ranked teams, mm -hmm. and you look at Florida State and UCLA and then Fresno State being ranked as well. So they've played some good teams, and those first two uh, were very competitive up through halftime, mm -hmm. and I think somehow those games got away from them in the second half. Uh, so it might be an issue of depth where, mm -hmm. where they, you know, as the game goes on and guys get dinged up and so forth, they're not able to play at that high level. But I think... Um, Playing good teams, um, they do have good team speed. Mm -hmm. They do have some good players. Uh, their their offense is is very tough uh, to deal with. It's the uh, pistol uh, zone read offense that that they've been so good at for years. And their quarterback's an outstanding runner with the ball. He'll he'll give it sometimes. He'll pull it and run with it, or he'll pull it and pass. And he's one. He's their second leading rusher. Mm -hmm. He's right up mm -hmm. there, 600 plus yep. yards. So uh, he's got that ability. Uh, and it seems like a broken record playing athletic quarterbacks <laughs> in the Mountain West Conference. There's so many of them, yeah. um, but they're a good team, and then defensively they do a good job swarming and pestering the ball. We have to, again, I think it's nice to establish a run game and nice to give our quarterback time to operate, uh, have our timing of our passing, passing game clicking, uh, and defensively corral and contain that quarterback so he doesn't hurt us. Now, I've heard a lot about maybe a comparison between him and Brett Smith of Wyoming. Is that something you kind of see too? I, I think so. Uh, it, very athletic, uh, not afraid to run the ball. Mm -hmm. Uh, but yet dangerous with his arm. And I think those two guys have that, and, and there are some similarities there. And then Kendall Brock is their running back, and mm -hmm. he's another threat. I think him right. and Fajardo have 13 touchdowns combined this year on the ground. Right, and 1,200 yards combined mm -hmm. rushing, those two. So uh, a good tandem there. They've got some big receivers as well, uh, so they can give it on the, the zone. They can pull it and throw it to the big body guys who can just uh, uh, you know basically box out smaller mm -hmm. corners mm -hmm. and, and do, a good, uh, do an effective job at that. Now, one thing you mentioned about the receivers, uh, Wimberly, who's who's the top target. I think he has the most mm. active catches in the FBS. Uh, but one thing about that is that Ben Aben Wickery, Deshaun Frierson, these guys have been doing great jobs against the number one receivers for the opponents. We've been pretty solid, and, and sometimes that's not the guy necessarily we – we get the focus there, and maybe another guy steps up for mm -hmm. the opponent. Mm -hmm. uh, but we have to do a good job across the board because this guy's a smart quarterback, and he'll find the open receiver. Now, defensively for Nevada, they uh, they do allow significant mm -hmm. amount of points per game, and, and their run defense is, has been suspect. What are you seeing from the defense? Well, they're four down guys that play hard. They're active. Their defensive end uh, has seven sacks. Yeah. Uh, 
Uh, he does a good job. Uh, he, he likes to line up on the weak open side and, and rush on the shorter edge. We mm -hmm. call it the non-tight end edge. And uh, effective job of creating pressure on the quarterback. But they do a good job up front. They play hard. They have some young players in the secondary. Um, but all in all, they're, they're a pretty good unit. And now, they do have a pretty good secondary with 10 interceptions. Yeah. So is that just an active secondary and they kind of more sit back in that defense? They, uh, they, they like to play a lot of two-shell, we call it, um, but they'll mix it up, too, and play okay. man as, as well. And, and I think the pressure up front has created the quarterback to force some balls mm -hmm. down the field over their games, and thus the reason for the, the n numerous interceptions. Now, do you talk to the team about maybe some of the elements? Because I've heard, you know, weather up there could be cold, could be raining. Mm -hmm. Do you talk to the team about the elements before we, you go into we, a game like this? We do a little bit. We talk about the atmosphere mm -hmm. more so. Mm -hmm. It's going to be, uh, hey, a hostile crowd. Yeah. They're known for that. Uh, it, it's going to be cool. We know that. That, uh, all those things but I don't want hey I try and emphasize more than the challenges which mm -hmm. hey embrace the challenges but make it more it's not about who it's not about when it's not about where it's about how yeah. how we play and the focus is on us how we play and that we execute properly so there will be those elements uh, of the game but we just need to be able to play through it and, and transcend all those uh, challenges that come our way I also think it's al always dangerous when you play a team that is out of postseason contention and mm -hmm. they're just the nothing to lose type of team right they are a prideful group and they're gonna want to finish strong uh, their seniors are gonna want to remember their last mm -hmm. few games go out on a high note uh, and their coaching staff wants to create some momentum into recruiting going into the offseason to carry forward into uh, the 2014 season. All right, Coach, final game of the regular season on the road. Uh, must feel pretty nice when we get home for two more, huh? it, it will be nice. It will be <laughs> nice. And, and we, we played pretty well on the road yeah, thus far, yeah. and we're looking forward and want to con need to continue that on Saturday night. All right, that's San Jose State Head Coach Ron Carrier. We'll take a break. More on Spartan Football Weekly when we return. Sergio Romo, pitcher and two-time World Series champion. A Bay Area legend. E-40. Platinum recording artist and actor. A Bay Area legend. Kinder's Barbecue. Three generations of hard work and family pride. Award winning barbecue, sauces, and meats. Kinder's Barbecue. A Bay Area legend. Uruma! Uruma's. Let's go! Uruma's! Una mas. Una mas. We taste better for lunch or dinner. The Learfield Sports Directors Cup is the officially sanctioned annual award recognizing all around excellence in men's and women's collegiate competition. NACTA and USA Today co-founded this esteemed honor in 1993, still widely recognized as the crowning achievement in college athletics. That's it for this week's show. Again, San Jose State takes on the Nevada Wolfpack this Saturday at 7.30. Coverage on 1590 AM KLIV will begin at 7 o'clock with the pregame show and can also be seen on ESPNU. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.